Temperatures Asia, a Chelsea TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Police shoot van taking patient to hospital in the Philippines. Activists in Vietnam sentenced to nine years for propaganda against the state. India sees no progress in the death of Manipuri man three months on. Restaurant fire in Mumbai spurs action against illegal establishments. Call for Indonesia's Judicial Commission to be strengthened. Human rights worsening in Pakistan. Welcome to HRC TV's Just Asia. I am Amila Sampath. This week, Just Asia begins with the Philippines, where the police killed two people, including a woman on her way to hospital after mistaking them for a gunman. The incident occurred on December 28 when police were called to Manila suburb following an early shooting during an argument between residents. The police opened fire on a van that they thought was carrying the shooter, but the van was actually taking a woman, Jonalyn Amboa, shot in the head when her partner had an argument with a certain Abdurrahman Aflin to the hospital. According to Muri Jemen, one of the persons in the van, although they told the police that they were bringing a patient to the hospital, the police did not listen and instead fired at them. The nine policemen involved in the shooting are being held pending an investigation. I think we need to ask a very serious question about this case. If you look at this, this is not related to drug war not related to killings of leftist activists and political dissidents. But the act of killing by the policemen of persons who try to help a victim of shooting without ensuring that those they are pursuing are the real perpetrators. And you can see in the videos already published online that the police did not really investigate properly and did not warn and did not listen from those inside the car that they are not uh, the gunmen they are pursuing. The number of bullets fired at the car is obviously a case of overkill and it is not proportionate to how police are supposed to use their power in restraining perpetrators. This case though spectacular as may seem is no longer surprising because for more than one year there have been tacit guarantee by the president himself uh, president rodrigo duterte that he won't allow law enforcers military officers to be prosecuted as long as they are doing it in performance of their duty and he will listen to the versions of the police and this discretionary power by the president explains how the phenomenon of killings in the Philippines by the police and the military gives them assurance of impunity. There won't be any prosecution uh, because the president himself had already said that and there had been killings in the past of this type. We have not seen any substantial progress that those perpetrators had already been convicted or punished for their crimes and for one year or so there have been reported killings between seven to ten thousand of suspected drug users and dealers and none of the investigations so far by the police, Commission on Human Rights and the legislative bodies had come out resulting in conviction and punishment of the police officers and the military. So this is only the manifestation that deterioration and descent into the abyss in the Philippines involving police killings and the military in which human rights and all those who are still concerned for human rights in Philippines and outside must pay close attention to. We are deeply concerned by the apathy and indifference by people inside and outside the Philippines on uh, human rights values. There, are, there have been debate about human rights as more of only entitled for privileged persons or politicians. But that, is, that kind of argument is self-defeating because if you argue that human rights is only good for those who are in power and the privileged, then you are saying that you're waiving your right to be considered as human and you are making yourself lesser human. 
than them. So in this case, it's very clear, uh, regardless of whether it involves drug users, human rights activists, anyone is at risk. And when the state uses its power, and if there's no check on the authority of the state, when they use force, worst killings like this could happen anytime, anywhere. In Vietnam, a well-known Catholic human rights activist has been sentenced to nine years in prison and five years of house arrest for propaganda against the state. In an appeal trial, the Supreme Court of Hanoi confirmed the sentencing of Maria Tramtinau to nine years in prison and five years of house arrest. Maria is the mother of two children, aged three and five. She fought for the right of migrant workers and victims of land disposition. She would use social network to denounce restriction of civil freedom and prevalence of corruption among the leaders of the Communist Party. Maria was arrested on 25th January 2017 and found guilty of propaganda against the state, a provision the Vietnamese authorities frequently used to silence any dissent. Her sentencing and the way the trial was held have been criticized. According to defense lawyer Hao Hui Sun, the evidence has not been collected in accordance with the legal process. He further noted that there is no legal evidence to support the charges against Ms. Trantina. The court has listened to our defense, but has not taken into account any of the information we have provided. Moving to India, the investigation into the death of Mr. Pravesh Chanam has not progressed at all over the past three months. A resident of Manipur, Pravesh, went to missing while he went to attend a musical concert in Noida, Uttar Pradesh on 8th of September 2017 and was found dead on the next day September 9th. While the Chief Minister of Manipur met the Chief Minister of Uttar Pradesh on September 25th and assurance were given regarding the quick and efficient investigations, nothing was done. Subsequently, there have been several calls for the case to be handed over to India's Central Bureau of Investigation. Most recently, various civil society groups in Manipur took out torch rally in Impal city demanding justice for Pravesh. At the same time, six women leaders are camping in Delhi demanding the case to be handed over to the CBI. Also in India, a fatal fire broke out on the top floor, a multi-story building in Kamala Mills compound, the lower parallel area of Mumbai, killing at least 14 people. The fire started at the restaurant in the early hours of December 29th and spread quickly. Many persons were injured. Kamala Mills is an oil industrial compound that was renovated to house, restaurant and pubs among other establishments. It has been alleged that the restaurant in question failed to follow safety norms and ensure the presence of an emergency exit in case of fire or other disasters. NFIR has reportedly been registered against the restaurant with charge of culpable homicide. The fire has spurred the local authorities to crack down on illegal establishments with many structures demolished. In Indonesia, there are calls for an amendment into national law on the Judicial Commission to allow the Commission to execute its recommendation. One serious problem faced by the Indonesian judicial system is bribery and corruption committed by judges. The last five years have seen 14 corruption cases involving judges in the district court, the anti-corruption court, the constitutional court, the high court and the administration court. Most recently of these is the cases of Justice Suriwardhanu, chairperson of North Sulawesi Province High Court and that the Justice Patrialis Akbar, a constitutional court judge. The lack of effective oversight mechanism is the key problem. The existing internal oversight by the Supreme Court and external oversight by the Judicial Commissions have failed to tackle the issue. The Judicial Commission at present can only issue recommendations which are not taken up. For this reason, the Commission's mandate needs to be strengthened so that it can execute the necessary recommendations. The Commission should also be involved in evaluating and reforming the Supreme Court. Moving to Pakistan, 2017 saw an increase in enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, violence against religious minorities, and the harassment of bloggers, peace activists, journalists, and writers. 
violence against women in the country is unparalleled. Pakistan ranked the fourth worst country for the women, according to recently released ranking by the Women Peace and Security Index. Of the 153 countries, assessed for their sensitivity for women's rights, for justice and security, Pakistan ranked 150. Pakistan's judiciary has proved itself subservient to security establishment and avoid addressing any abuses by intelligence agencies. Despite its many pledges before the UN, the government has yet to criminalize torture. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia forward slash Just Asia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.